Hey guys, I'm Ryan Naylor, and this is how to play Best Fake Smile by James Bay. I uh, see so he's just releasing this one. It's from his album Chaos on the Calm. Great tune. Uh, I thought I'd share it with you today. So if you're not done so already, please subscribe if you're new to the family and give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. It really does help me out enormously. Thank you. All right, let's get thinking about the tuning for the song. Now, James Bay, if you don't know, he tends to tune his guitars down a whole step or a tone. So he runs D, G, C, F, A, D from low to high. This song, actually, when he plays it, he capos at the first fret. So what that puts us in is sort of standard, but down then a semitone or a half step. So that's what I've done with my guitar. I mean, uh, everything standard, E flat, E flat standard. So it's E flat, A flat, B flat, G flat, B flat, E flat with an open string. It will put you in the right tuning to play the song. The progressions themselves are pretty easy. There's only two, really. There's the verse, which is also the same as the chorus and then the bridge part. So let's take the um, chorus first because that's how the song starts. It opens up with uh, the first half of the chorus and we're starting on a G or a G5. Um, and then we're going to be going to an E minor. Now it's regular E minor but Pinky is going to be up on the top. String one, third fret and then to a D. Right, we'll be going back to the G5 and then at the end, and this pop comes in every so often, we get a G6 chord, it's a G chord with an E, but we're strumming it from the A string, so where's the D note in fret 5, so this is going to be called a G6 slash D. And so the basic progression is we're doing four measures of a G, then one measure E minor, one D, and then back to two Gs. So it's don't wear your best fake smile, don't have to stand them burn inside. Oh, 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 if you don't like it. Okay, so doing that will get you through in a simple version. But what we've got is we are strumming, rather we are hitting the chords on the ands in the upbeat. So it's a syncopated kind of strumming pattern. And we actually start up on a pickup note in that we're not starting on beat number one, we're starting on the end of beat number four. So one, two, three, four, and. All right, it's one and two and three and four, and. So it's up, down, and one, two. That's the rhythm there, okay? Two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, do it twice. Same throughout, E minor. <laughs> And then we've got a little stab on the end. Okay, so the rhythm is the same for all the chords, just on the penultimate measure, we have a stab of the G5 on the end of beat number four. Let's do that one again, so it went three, four, and three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and 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 and then, as we go into the verse, we've got the, the G6 slash D, and that goes and four and. Okay, you can go up, down, up, down, 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 whatever suits. I tend to go up, down, up. Okay. And then we hit into the verse uh, around 14 seconds. Now, the progression is the same, but what we're doing is we're doing some kind of single note picking. And the notes we're picking is fret 7 on the G string and fret 5 on the B string. Kind of clashy, but that's the effect we're going for. And we let these notes ring out. We start picking on the upbeat of 1, the end of beat number 1. And, and that's starting on the G string. And 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2. And then in the song you hear this this kind of unison bend. Now when he plays this live, he's got his second guitarist doing that bend. So the part I've transcribed in this section is just continuing that picking, and then on the end of beat number three, we go to the G6. So it's gonna go like this. And two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay. As he does it when he performs it. And then that, the second time you do it again. Uh, and two and three and four and one and two and three. Then you go to the E minor on the and four end. 
and then we hit one D stab. And then we go again. So that chorus, sorry, that verse part together after four, two, three, four, one. Four, and again. Two, three, four, two. Two, two, two. Two. And, done. and then we're into the chorus around 41 seconds. And again, it's a pick up note, so we start playing on the end of beat number four. And the progression is the same as it was in the intro. Now you do it twice, and on the second time you end again with the G6. So it's going to be... Don't have to wear your best fake smile. Don't have to burn and burn inside. Oh, 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 if you don't like it. Uh, uh, uh. You go again, on the second time, you're ending on the G6. And full end. Then we hit a break at 108, and it's that, um, those let ring picking notes again. It's a unison bend, it's very hard to do on a floating bridge, because you can't keep the thing in tune. You want for the note on fret 14 on the G string and fret 12 on the B string, you want to bend fret 14, keeping fret 12 still. So you go that tune. But the idea is you bend them to sound like one another. And the second time, he bends the, the seventh fret into the fifth fret note. Okay, that's the break. Verse 2 at 115 is the same as verse number 1, exactly the same thing, played twice. Chorus at 142, it's the same thing again, but on the second time we don't have the G6, we're just kind of silenced, and then we hit into the bridge. Bridge around 209 is a bit more um, straightforward, we've got our C chord, but we've got a C chord with pinky up on fret number 3 of the high E string. Okay, we're going to have that for two measures, and then we go to E minor, and then to D. Okay, now when the, the D chord comes, on the upbeat of four, so again, it's a kind of anticipated chord change. So let me play that progression. Eighth note. And you're back into the G5. Again, that chord change comes on the end of beat four. <laughs> Same as it was before. Okay? Now you do that three times, and on the third time, you repeat the E minor part. <laughs> And that's the song. Tabs you can get from my website. If you did find that useful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye.